Football Manager is a solitary experience. If you win the Champions League, you look in the mirror and give yourself a thumbs up or run around shirtless and screaming in your apartment, but either way, you're doing it alone. If you destroy your keyboard and smash your laptop and throw both of them out the window, then you're also doing that alone. But that is no longer the case because Football Manager, for better or worse, is now becoming an eSport. The news broke on June 27th. Articles everywhere. Reuters had an article that was picked up by ESPN. FIFA to host Football Manager World Cup. A $100,000 prize in the inaugural Football Manager World Cup hosted by FIFA's eSports arm called FIFA E. Obviously, SI working in collaboration with them to help kind of set this up, but it is the first mainstream football manager actual league esports attempt ever, as far as I know. I've long wondered if football manager had esports potential. Now I'm gonna get into my problems with it, but first we're gonna go over the format and where this came from and how it's even going to work. The tournament is gonna happen itself in Liverpool. I was actually invited not as a contestant, but as somebody that's just gonna go and stream and kind of cover the event, which is gonna be cool. I'm obviously excited for that. But the format is as follows. There are 19 countries that have agreed to send delegations to this competition. My home country, the United States, is not one of them. That's obviously a shame because this is an invitation. That doesn't mean that every representative of each country was invited. In fact, a lot of the 19 countries held various different types of qualifying tournaments. Some of the members of this community participated in those qualifying events. I had multiple people in chat on the Twitch stream talking about how they were trying to get through the different rounds of the Netherlands qualifying. But at the end of the day, these are the nations set to be represented. Belgium, England, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, South Korea, Lithuania, Malaysia, Netherlands, Norway, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Spain, Switzerland, and Turkey. And there are 20 representatives from these 19 nations. Where the other ones come from, I actually don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's a second English participant because England is, of course, the host nation. But there aren't just going to be 20 managers at the tournament because on top of those 20 managers, they're all allowed to bring assistant managers to the competition, which means you're gonna actually have 40 people participating in the tournament. You've got the lead manager and then the assistant manager. And the reason for that is actually really cool because as part of this tournament, you're going to hear the manager discussing like decisions with the assistant manager, which means you're going to get a lot more of these thoughts out loud, which is gonna make the viewer experience and for me personally, the coverage experience, the experience of covering this tournament much more exciting because you're gonna know what's going on in the minds of the players. The participating managers in this Football Manager World Cup are also going to have press conferences, of course. Uh, this is something that is going to be used to try and get an idea of what the managers are doing, but it's also being used to apply that real world type of managerial pressure on the participants in this tournament. I will be one of the people in those press conferences asking the questions. So if you have any great ideas of questions I should be asking people in the inaugural FM World Cup, then please do let me know. I have you used loans lately? If not, I have a great deal for you. No money down, but you still get the play. But all of that is obviously around what is the format of the tournament. And I'll be completely honest, I love the format of the tournament. I have some concerns about football managers and eSport, but I love the way they've decided to set the tournament up. So first there is going to be something called a group stage. <gasps> Group stage, never. I work alone. But the point of the group stage is really interesting. It's designed to highlight all of the different managerial aspects you have to be good at in order to be good at football manager. That was their goal going into this, which is cool. Unlike something like the streamer showdown, which you may have watched on Twitch or seen clips of on YouTube that happened over the last couple of years, kind of a battle of streamers, but it was all a fantasy draft. This is different than that. It is basically a career mode. Now the 20 players players are gonna be divided into four groups of five. And you only advance by winning your group, but the group stage happens over four days. Now, once those groups are decided, each group is going to have a different challenge revealed to them, basically a club that they are going to take over. So each group is gonna be managing a different club 
but they're all going to be managing the same club. So say one group gets Everton, the other one gets Lyon, and a third group gets a third division team in Uzbekistan, right? That's not obviously in the game, but you get the idea. Second division in Indonesia or something. And then on the first day, you get that club up to the first match day. You prepare for the first match day. You get, you get, get your feet wet with that club. Then over the next three days, you are going to play three seasons with that club. You only have nine hours to finish each season, which is super, super, super interesting because one, it takes me like 900 hours to finish one season. If you've ever watched a save on Twitch, you understand what I'm talking about. And two, you only get three three hour windows on each of those three days. You are going to have to decide exactly how you want to approach using your nine hours to finish the season. Because obviously, if you don't finish the season, you're not going to get as many points added to your tally and you have to win your group. They also come from your progression in cups. You get more points for each round of a cup that you're able to make it to. So let's say one person makes the Champions League final, the other person makes the round of 16, and they both have a similar number of points in the league, the person that made the Champions League final will get more points for that season. And you don't just play one season, you play three seasons. And you're not just repeating the first season, so this isn't some sort of gimmicky situation where you want to just loan in 20 players in one year and bankrupt your club. You have to make it sustainable over three years in order to find success. Now, of course, the door will be open for some kind of gimmicky operations with the money, you know, especially getting to the final season. You'll be able to wait some transfer offers to maybe get one or two more players in that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise based off of future installments. But if you do go like full Lelujo and decide to go massive installments in year one, that could really hurt your ability to acquire good players down the line. And perhaps very complicatedly, there is a managerial performance score section, and I'll just read it for you. We believe it's important to evaluate a manager's performance not only by the team's setup, but also how well they handle managerial tasks. Such aspects, however, are much more challenging to monitor. Therefore, this is still a work in progress. So I don't know if there's going to be any other categories where points are scored on. Maybe if you have unbelievable dynamics or something, you finish a little higher. But I think having too many points in that category would probably be a mistake. There's so many different things to consider, and it's really the first way I've ever seen competitive football manager put together in a way that really tests your full ability to play the game. It tests your decision making, your composure in a time crunch and under pressure, your dynamics, your scouting techniques, your managerial techniques, your tactical adjustments over the course of a season, how you respond to injuries, I mean, everything. It's all gonna be tested and you have to win your group. Now, as the seasons go along, you are also gonna be required to give updates to what they call your stakeholders. Uh, just like a proper manager, as, as they say right here, which is also fun. This is the press conference thing. They're going to be tackling critical questions from yours truly and other members of the media in the football world. And it's also noted that if participants take additional time to explain their actions, they're going to be given a limited amount of extra time, perhaps to scout, or maybe if they need help finishing their season in a little more than nine hours. They do have a stipulation for if you don't finish your season in time, you have to literally vacation to the end of the season. And people that are administering the competition are going to make sure that you use uh, the vacate function with little to no influence in the remaining game days to bring to a close the season. And there's also an excellent little note here. If a player is fired by the in-game board governing the club, said player is eliminated from the competition. This also probably counts for accidentally resigning. Looking at you, work the space. I don't know if you'd be able to win that game even if you were <gasps> trying to win. They're a All good right, team. <laughs> But the ultimate embarrassment would be getting selected or qualifying for the first Football Manager World Cup and then getting sacked. And honestly, depending on how hard the challenges are that are put forth for each group, that definitely could be a possibility. I mean, as much as I play Football Manager on FM three or four years ago, I got fired by Manchester United after losing the Champions League final in extra time because I missed one or two other expected things for the club in that year. So if you build up a club to a certain level, it can be a little tricky to not get sacked even if you're cooking but once those four days are over that brings us to the final day and this is where football manager really for the first time ever is gonna have that esports kind of studio spotlight on it because we're down to the last four managers and it's time for a fantasy draft. I don't know if I like that as much. I mean, obviously the way they decided to do it over the course of the first four days is in my opinion, a better test of overall football manager ability. But I get the idea that, you know, fantasy draft and having this kind of dramatic final showdown on the last day 
is really exciting. I mean, it just makes for excellent television and creates those really intense high pressure situations that managing a club over multiple seasons might not as much. The truth is, we don't know, especially when we get to the final day of the groups, how much drama will be there in that final season because it's the first time this is ever being done. They had to come up with all of this from scratch, which I imagine is very difficult to begin with. But as they note, in the first couple of days, the players are participating from their offices. So each participant in the tournament is in their own office with their assistant manager. They're coming out of it to do press conferences and stuff. Uh, ideally, on the stream that I'm doing and on the coverage that FIFA E has going, there's going to be cameras in those offices. It's going to look like kind of the NFL draft, if you've ever watched that before, where you can you can check in on all of the different rooms to see how they're doing. But on the final day, they're moved to a different setting. The studio setup, all the lights, attention, and pressure are on them, like I was saying. The morning of the final day, the final four players will be made aware of a player pool, and all four of them will draft in a fantasy draft from that player pool pool to build their best squad. They then come up with the tactics and the instructions and they play a home and away in a drawn semi-final. And then if you make the final, you play a home and away and you can be crowned the first ever football manager World Cup champion. Hey, Zealand here from the future as well. It turns out that that final day I was just talking about, you will be able to attend in person if, if you want to in Liverpool. So that's awesome. The only limitations are for the number of tactical pauses you can make during a match. So obviously you have to have that in there so somebody doesn't pause every two seconds or something. There is going to be a limit. It's not made clear yet to how many pauses you can have, but the the podcasts that they have around these sorts of FIFA esports competitions, uh, one of the people that created this tournament came on it to talk about the reasons behind this. When I say that, I mean like the reasons behind doing it one way and then the other way. See, they wanted the group stage to represent the full managerial experience, and then they really wanted to hone in on the tactical stuff for the final four, which means if you do go through extensive amounts of tactical preparation to get ready for this tournament, that's inherently gonna make you more prepared for it. Now on site, there's not just gonna be me, there's gonna be experts from the real world of football as well, and a couple of other football manager people that are gonna be there to ask questions of the people that are doing it, to talk about the people that are competing in this tournament, to try and, the way they said it was to connect the real world of football to Football Manager, because even in their podcast, they referred to the fact that Football Manager is the most realistic simulation. So that's what they're trying to do, create this realistic environment or something. Obviously, when I first heard about this, I really wanted to participate in it. Uh, I figured it would be awesome. The United States decided not to send a delegation to the tournament for whatever reason, cost or who has any idea, right? We probably need to you know, cut off a lot of money to pay for Mauricio Pochettino, in which case I'm okay with that. But even when I knew I wasn't gonna be playing in it, I'm still very, very excited for this tournament. Maybe just because Football Manager's been my life for such a long time, but to see it get this kind of attention, uh, is just cool. And then to have the opportunity to be involved in it is also just cool. But like I said earlier, I do have some reservations about Football Manager uh, as, as an eSport. I think this tournament, the way that it's set up goes a long way to address them, but Football Manager is at, an, at its core, a single player sandbox game. And there is just a ton of RNG. Football Manager is a black box. It's a black box by design. You can't see through Football Manager. You can't go behind the match engine and see exactly why somebody crossed instead of shooting or why somebody's long shot went in on that particular occasion, like what the chance was of it going in. None of that information is available, which makes the game, as much as you try to test it with all the variables that are in it, somewhat intuitive. It means there's gonna be multiple types of people at this tournament. There's gonna be your Magnus Carlsen types, if you know chess, where they just kind of see the music, right? They played Football Manager so much that they just have a hunch and a feeling that this is gonna work. And you're also gonna have the other types of professional chess players, just to keep that metaphor going, where they test tens of thousands of tactics before going into this tournament and try to prepare themselves to match up against any conceivable formation. And then the matchups between those types of managers are gonna be really, really interesting. But because of all that RNG, I think it best professional football manager is maybe like the World Series of Poker or something. Because in football manager, you can do everything right and lose. Right, and I realize that's probably the same in, in every sport, but football manager, you're not controlling the players out there on the field. So there's a little less of the blame that you are able to take in this situation. I'm aware that it is possible for there to be professional poker players. My concern is if, you know, this does well, right? And it grows and it's exciting and the format's awesome and it kicks ass. 
right, then you're going to have very large qualifying tournaments with thousands and thousands of people participating in them. And I just don't know if you're able to create enough of a skill gap in Football Manager to have somebody qualify for the tournament on merit multiple times. I would say that's probably my biggest concern going into this. That's obviously a concern for the future because right now it's kind of a quasi-invitational. Some people had limited qualifying. Some people just picked one person and sent them, right? And everything in between, which is really an interesting way to do it. But in order for there to be an eSport, there needs to be the ability to create a skill gap. And I don't know if that ability is there in Football Manager. But for the first time, we're actually going to have the chance to find out. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm gonna have a great time. <laughs> I'm gonna have a great time there. I don't have the stress of competing. All the other people do. So I'll just be able to sit there and hang out. And I am going to be live streaming my coverage of the tournament the whole time on my Twitch channel. So if you've never checked that out before and you wanna watch the Football Manager World Cup, I will be there uh, and I will be broadcasting coverage of it from Liverpool, which will hopefully be awesome. And let's be perfectly honest, even if Football Manager is not a perfect esport, it is dramatic and it can be awesome and it probably will be. So good luck to the people that managed to qualify or were selected for the tournament, the inaugural Football Manager World Cup. They've got information about where you can watch it. Uh, FIFA.gg is gonna aggregate all the streams and they're going to keep live results and statistics that can hopefully accompany you watching my Twitch stream. Hi. Hopefully this is awesome. Hopefully it's a great time and maybe I'll see you there online or maybe you track me down in a Greg's in Liverpool. Oh, you're still here. God, you scared me. What are you doing? Go watch another video of mine. There's plenty to choose from. I got one right there. It should be good fun. If not, I should probably, like, take it down if it's not fun. That would be stupid.